Product samples, a very important part of the Amazon FBA process. But when should you order them? How should you pay for them? And what can you do to get the most out of the sample once you've got it? Today, I'm gonna go through my entire checklist and I'm gonna open this package for you. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. What's up, Empire Builders? JT Franco here, the no bullshit Amazon seller. This is the place to be if you wanna learn how to make money on Amazon by someone that's actually doing it. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're already an Empire Builder, welcome back. Hopefully your empire is going strong. So, samples, all right? Now, there's gonna be a big debate on this. Well, there is kind of a big debate on this, but I think it's silly because some people will say you don't need samples, some people will say you do need samples, and to me, uh, I was originally on the side of you don't need samples, right? Just go ahead, uh, you know, the pictures are good enough, whatever you see is good enough uh, with, you know, your chat with the manufacturer, but I've been burned enough times to know or to change my mind, right? The first three products I got, I didn't order samples and every single time I was burned on them uh, for something that could have been easily solved by just getting a freaking sample. It would have cost me like 40, 50, 60 bucks, okay? So at this point, I always suggest go ahead and get a sample. If you don't want to do it, you're on your own there, uh, you know, it's your own risk tolerance, but the way I see it is if you're gonna buy a car, you're gonna test drive it, right? Getting a product without a sample is like buying a car without test driving it. Sure, whatever you see on paper and what you see on the, the pamphlet is probably good, but if you just don't know really until you sit in it and you test it, you compare it uh, to everything else. And honestly, uh, once you're doing Amazon FBA and you're getting into it, you're probably gonna be end up spending more on products than you are gonna be on a car. I definitely have spent more on on an inventory investing in products than I ever have on any car in my entire life. So take this seriously, all right? So when is the time that you're gonna be getting samples? You're going to be getting samples once you have already started talking to suppliers, you already kind of narrowed down, you know what product you want, now you're talking to multiple suppliers um, and you're narrowing them down a little bit. So the, what you're gonna be looking for is kind of the price, right? You're gonna be looking at the communication of the supplier, you're gonna be looking at the production time uh, and the quality that you can kind of sense based on just the communication. Once you have those kind of figured out um, and you you, you, you have a few suppliers in the range that you like, pick the top three and then order those samples, right? So you're gonna order three of them to compare um, with each other to see which one you're gonna go with. So now when you're ordering the samples, the next question is how do you pay for your sample, right? So the way you're gonna pay, the way that I pay at least is through PayPal, right? So it's pretty easy, the supplier's not probably not gonna have a problem with it for such a small order, like, you know, $30. Uh, and for the most part, what you're paying for is shipping. So some suppliers will say the sample is free, uh, you pay for shipping, or they're gonna charge you for the sample and then they'll, re you know, they'll refund you or they'll minus that from the cost when you place your large order, okay? So now you've ordered your samples and your sample has arrived, right? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna open it, swap, and you're gonna take it out and check that out. These are not actually samples. This is just an Amazon product because your sample obviously is not gonna come in an Amazon bag. Let's see, let's do a quick breakdown of this product though. I got some uh, headphones here. So this here is what you call a, a poly bag, right? And then um, there's no real branding here. Then this is on the back is your FN SKU. Let's see what this is, looks like when you open this product. Uh, my dog ate my headphones, dog problems, right? So this here is what you call a product insert. Um, and there's not really much branding on this. So if I was be selling this product or if saw a student selling this product, I probably wouldn't go this route. And I wanna mention really quickly, on a product insert, it says, um, we give free samples to customers that give fair reviews. That will get you banned on Amazon. So don't do that. Um, but obviously they got away with it for now. And I got three sets, pairs of headphones for like 11 bucks. All right, so now that you got your samples, this is actually great because I got three different ones. We'll pretend these are three separate suppliers, right? What you're gonna do with your samples is you're going to use them, right? You're gonna use them and try to break test them, push the limits on these products to really see the quality. Because remember, this is your, your call, right? This is like you're making the decision now on what product you're gonna invest a bunch of money on and you're gonna be selling to other people, uh, hopefully for a long term. So you wanna make sure that you're testing the quality of these products and really pushing the boundaries with them to see when they are gonna give, when they're gonna break. Um, and there's a few tips that I'm gonna tell you right now is what I like to do is first, make sure you're comparing the products to customer reviews. So when you're looking at the products and you're looking at your competitors, look at the reviews, sort by negative reviews, um, and see what the negative reviews are, right? Hopefully by now you've already done this, uh, but now that you got the sample in hand, go back over those reviews and see if any of these samples are matching up with those reviews, right? Whatever the negative reviews are, are is that in line with your product? So if this says like, you know, the whatever the earbud is too is soft and it's it's breakable or it's too squishy is that what I'm is that what I'm seeing here right and if it is if you're seeing common problems coming up 
in your sample that you saw on the review, then make sure that you're addressing them, that with the manufacturer and telling them that and letting them know, or maybe you just go with a different one that doesn't have that same problem. Um, the next thing I like to do is order the top competitor's product, like your actual uh, competitor on Amazon, order their product and then compare it with you. Cause you want to make sure if you're going to be competing in the market, uh, you, that you're actually selling a product that's just as good or better, hopefully better than the top guy in that market. So order his product and use it like it's just a regular, like it's one of your samples uh, and really compare it. And then what you can do is message your manufacturer, whoever, whichever manufacturer is in the lead and you know, is in the heading and say, Hey, this is what this product does. And this is what I, I want it to do. And you know, compare it. unless of course it's a wildly different differentiation uh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Uh, another cool hack is that once you go through these products, you have your different ones, uh, make a big list. Right, so make a big list of things that you're testing and you're playing with uh, and that you're seeing and if there's any faults that you that you found make sure you make a big list of that so that what you can do is that once you're getting an inspection um, at you know once the product is actually done and once you get an inspection from an inspection company you can tell the inspection company make sure you check for this 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 and this uh, because you've been able to use it yourself and see it yourself and you know that these are common problems so you want to make sure that an inspection company is going to be able to look for that specifically if you know those are problems that you can look for uh, the next thing next tip I want to give is that once you get a sample, don't rely on just yourself to go through the sample, right? Because once you're invested in a product, at least mentally and emotionally invested into a product, like you got a sample, it's exciting. You can kind of sometimes pre-sell yourself on a product. So you can have these blinders on and have tunnel vision because you are just super excited about the prospect of a product. So what you need to do, I always suggest get a second opinion, get a third, fourth opinion from someone else, you know, give it to someone else to use it and test it and play around with it to see what they think, to see if they can find any flaws, um, especially if they're removed from the product. Um, let them see it and see from the first impression without even knowing what the product is, what they think of it and you know, how they use it um, and the questions that they might have, because that is sometimes the most valuable insight, someone that's not really you know, in it and in the trenches like you would be. So what I do, I like to give it to my girlfriend, I like to give it to a friend, I like to give it you know, to my uncle or relative or whatever it is and let them see what they, what they think of it um, and, and you let them use it for a little bit. And the final really cool thing you can do is that once you have these samples from different suppliers, you can really leverage that against the supplier to negotiate the price. So sometimes the, you know, you'll get a supplier that says, oh, my, my product is the best quality and this is why I charge the best price. Now you actually have proof, hey, you know what? I ordered a sample from another supplier who has equal quality to yours or they have a better this or whatever um, and they're offering a cheaper price. And then you can kind of hedge these suppliers against each other to get a better quote and get a better uh, price point for your product. So that's a great way to actually, you know, negotiate and have real, you know, have be holding the cards um, when it comes to negotiating price points and getting your differentiation done as you want it to be done. And that leads me to differentiation, right? So making your product different, how are you gonna upgrade it? How are you gonna make it better? How are you gonna make it stand out? Um, once you know, you're know you doing product research, you're gonna have an idea of that because like I say, it's called the Grand Slam screen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you watch this video on how to um, uh, verify a product opportunity, uh, I pass it through the grand slam screen, which is thinking, asking yourself, how can you make it different? How can you differentiate? And you can always do that on, you know, on the research side of things when you're doing, looking at negative reviews, looking at these different things and looking at frequently bought together, or, you know, just coming up with ideas on your own. But once you actually have a product in hand and you're using it, uh, you can come up with, you know, better differentiation ideas because you, you actually have it in hand. Oh, maybe, you know, when you're using a product, oh, this could be better. Oh, this is too loose or this is feels flimsy or whatever it is. This is a good time to really think about how can I make this product better and improve it? Don't just break test it to see when it's going to break and when it's going to give, you know, use it and, and be a, and like be aggressive with it to see where you can actually improve on the product and make a differentiate and make your mark on that market. Uh, and once you do, do that, now you can talk to the different suppliers and see, you know, how much is that going to cost uh, depending on what supplier you're talking to. So those are kind of the key metrics, the checklist that I go through when I'm evaluating these products. And I'll usually evaluate products for, you know, five to seven days and really get a good look at them. So what is the next step once this is done? This is just your first sample. Uh, and the way I do it is I order an unbranded sample, right? So just whatever the manufacturer makes. Um, and then once I go ahead and choose the manufacturer that I'm going to go with, I'm going to get another sample, a branded sample. So this is a sample that is going to have your logo, your design, your differentiation, your box, um, your packaging, everything. And I'm going to get that made and shipped to me as they are making and shipping the rest of my order so that I can get it. And the reason I do that is so that I can get product photography um, because obviously you don't want to do product photography with just um, an unbranded sample because then it's not, it's not actually your product. It's just a generic product. So this is when you're going to get product photography, whether you're doing that yourself at home or you're getting a local, you know, a local photographer to do it for you or you're sending it to viral launch, whatever it is, it's always a good idea to get a branded sample sent to yourself 
um, and not just wait because some people will just wait till it gets into Amazon and then order their own product. But then at that point, you're already on Amazon. So you're, you need pictures by that point, right? So this is when I get branded samples uh, to get it done. So I'm technically getting two samples uh, for the same product. Um, and that is basically all there is to it. Now, again, I want to stress the importance of getting samples. Um, do you need to get a sample? Absolutely. No, you don't. But really, if you're going to be investing a bunch of money, you know, two, three, four, five thousand dollars into a product, what is sixty dollars to make sure this is the best quality? What is sixty dollars to make sure that this is actually the best one that you can go with so that you know 100% fact that you can be 100% confident that when you launch your product, you don't have any worries, right? Because again, it's a minimal cost, it's a drop in the bucket when you look at the scope of the business that you're trying to build. Now, the only thing that is actually more important than ordering a sample for your Amazon product is to make sure that you hit the like button for me on this video uh, if you enjoyed it. And again, if you want more Amazon content, click that video right over there or click my face in the middle to subscribe. Um, I also have a free masterclass in the bottom corner and in the description. That's all I got for you today. I'm JC Franco. Hopefully by now you are an empire builder, which means you never forget your empire awaits. I am made to be free